see, when I go on my holidays, I tell you what I love doing more than anything in the world, and that's trying to pack myself into a small suitcase. <laughs> I can hardly contain myself. <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs> Get it! <laughs> oh, roll titles. <laughs> Wait a minute. That can't be me. I've got paws. Not him. Hi there, friend. Albert Kirk from Albert Kirky. Um, would you just excuse me for one teeny weeny second? Missing you already. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Stephen, wake up. Mr. Stephen, there's something very strange going on. Hello! I'm Marilyn Kirk. And may I just say, I love this old English tradition of sharing rooms. It's so <laughs> quaint. No. She's definitely there. Hey, can I introduce my husband, Al? Al! Get up here, fella! Basil, can I have a quiet word in the kitchen? <laughs> One quiet word? Then it will be all shouting and screaming. <laughs> uh... I'm telling you there's a woman in my room. That doesn't sound very likely. You must have dreamt it. Okay. Oh, I know the difference between real life and a dream. Yes, one is a bizarre world inhabited by freaks in which anything could happen. The other is a dream. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't believe that there is an American couple in this flat. I mean, what would they be doing here? Having breakfast. Morning! <laughs> Say, isn't this hotel simply divine? Just look at this. Genuine antique toast. I mean, <laughs> this mold must be hundreds of years old. What does she mean, hotel? This wasn't a hotel yesterday. You're right. I mean, who could have turned our flat into a hotel overnight? And cue Dave. Good morning, Mr and Mrs Kirk. I hope your stay will be a long and happy one. <laughs> and yours will be a short and unhappy one if you don't tell me what's going on. Mr and Mrs Kirk are guests in my hotel. Mr Kirk's a cosmetic surgeon from America. Just give me a call any time you need your face narrowed. <laughs> and as for you, little fella, you have got the best excuse for a nose job I have ever seen. <laughs> well, I could even uh, stretch you out a little uh, itty-bitty discount over there, yeah. That discount on a nose job? Well, I suppose that's not to be sniffed at. <laughs> you are not opening a hotel in my flat. Ah, hold your horses, Mr Stephen. I hate to admit it, but he might be on to something. Mr Rossiter will want the rent soon and we are skint. OK, Dave. How's it work? Simple. You give me 50 quid each to pay for your rooms last night. 50 quid to sleep in our room, bitch. I am prepared to take credit cards. Yes, but he's not prepared to give them back. I'm sorry, Dave. The only way you're keeping this hotel is if you cut us in. As it happens, I am thinking of branching out, so I will need some help running the place. I've decided to start offering guests local sightseeing tours. Yes, right. Uh, Dave's offered to show us the genuine park bench where Shakespeare won the Battle of Waterloo. <laughs> <laughs> and if they like it... I'm going to sell it to them. I'm sorry, but is that really the message that we want to be giving to the viewers? That conning people is OK? Well, I'll be staying with Madison until this episode is over. Nah, don't worry. She'll be back. Dave's rented out Madison's rooms as well. <laughs> <laughs> so 
sorry, Molly. I mean, I couldn't say no. All the profits go to charity. Doesn't sound much like Dave. Yeah, well, it's for the Distinguished Association of Vole Encouragement. I mean, do you know how totally little encouragement voles get? It's no wonder the poor little guys live in holes. The Distinguished Association of Vole Encouragement? Yeah, the D-A-V-E. Did Dave, by any chance, ask you just to use the initials on the checks? Sure, why? Are you sure we can fit six people in the Emperor's Suite? Hold on, which, which one's the Emperor's Suite? The toilet. <laughs> but there's no beds in the toilet, duh. So, they'll just have to sleep standing up, duh. Dave! Uh-oh. I recognise the tone of that voice. Those of you of a nervous disposition should look away. Dave, tell Madison exactly what's happening to the money. And don't dare deny that it's all going to you. This should be good. One can always tell when Master Dave's learning. His lips move. <laughs> I'm not denying it. The money is for me. But I need it. I'm desperate. I've only got seven pairs of trainers. <laughs> and my games console. It's over a month out of day. <laughs> I can't live like this. Please. Please help me. Oh, Dave, you can totally count on me. We need this advert to show all the positive points of the hotel. What have we got so far? The Pitts Hotel. <laughs> Not quite the worst hotel in Britain. What's wrong with that? It's not true. It is the worst hotel in Britain. <laughs> yeah. Each room comes complete with its very own spider. <laughs> this is hopeless. Oh, don't give up, Miss Molly. It's just a question of rewording it. And how would you reword spider? Mm, well... <gasps> Each room has access to the web. <laughs> <laughs> See? I'd make a great spin doctor. <laughs> spin. Web. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and don't forget the gym! <laughs> Where's the gym? In the cupboard. Hello, I'm Jim. Don't forget this place, just across the studio. Lovely local restaurant. Lovely local restaurant? I don't mind lying, but that's criminal. Well, if you dislike it so much, why do you keep coming? It's the only other set we've got. Good point. Right, I've worked out which jobs we should do. Basil, you're the maitre d'. Me, hey, recommend the table baddie. Window saw. <laughs> you might want to jump out when you see the food. <laughs> Madison is in total charge of all our guests' hair, nail and beauty requirements. Dave, this is the very cafe where Christopher Columbus bought his sandwiches for the trip to America. Yeah, well, yeah. Dave is busy. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'll do everything else. Hold on! Gonna do. <laughs> Help, boy! <laughs> oh, stop complaining. It's a perfect fit for a ten year old. <laughs> totally cool, Stephen. There's just one tiny thing to remember. What? Don't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this. Mm. Yeah, so am I. Great idea. And so original. I mean, a comedy show set in a dodgy hotel with a main character called Bevel. <laughs> it's never been done before. Well, apart from... Saved by the bell. <laughs> Mr. Stephen, do the honours. Good morning. Welcome to the Pitts Hotel. <laughs> I don't know. We've only been open five seconds and he's already laying down on the job. <laughs> this is a nightmare. 
I've just spent the last hour carrying suitcases. Look what it's done to my arms! <laughs> well, I always said this job would stretch you. <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs> Oh, come on! A bit of hard work never hurt anybody. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Table four want the continental breakfast with marmalade instead of jam and no dough products. Table six want the decaf coffee with sweet nut, not sugar and half cream. Table seven want the full English breakfast with extra mushrooms, sausage and egg, no toast or beans. Beans. Me and Basil reckon we should cut our losses and close the hotel. Surely you're not scared of hard work? I'm not scared of work. I can go to sleep right next to it, any time I like. <laughs> all right, hands up all those that want to keep going. <laughs> OK, then, that's settled. Back to work, everybody. <laughs> what are we going to do now? I don't suppose you've got any ideas, Mr. Anil. Just shut up and eat it! <laughs> uh, sorry, the service here is so terrible, nobody stays here long enough for me to get rid of them. <gasps> That's it! <laughs> we'll treat the guests so badly they'll want to leave. <laughs> Anil, you are a genius. Am I? Of course you are. You have to be. To get away with being that stupid. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Come, Mr. Stephen, we have holidays to ruin. <laughs> Like me some cereal. <laughs> you know where the kitchen is, mush. <laughs> For... Ah, yes, lovely views. <laughs> it's the garden shed, isn't it? <laughs> now, you've got table three. It's the dustbin with the tablecloth on. <laughs> Basil? Hmm? Oh, it's working. They're on the verge of leaving. They just need one more push. Yeah, don't worry, I've got just the thing. <laughs> hey, Basil, what did you want? Ah, medicine. Mm. Our guests just don't seem happy. Oh. I think they might have some negative energy. <laughs> Would you mind feng shuiing their room? <laughs> that is a totally awful idea. Sorry, Dave. Everyone's leaving. <laughs> no, I mean out there. There's a queue of new guests right down the corridor. G'day, mate. G'day, mate. I'd like a room, please. What do you want to stay here for? Well, everyone's talking about it. You know, the rude staff, the terrible rooms. They are saying that this is the worst hotel in the whole world. Ha! Sounds like a boot. <laughs> I'm staying for a week. What are we going to do now? I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. <laughs> Help! You and Stephen decide that to get rid of these new guests, you'll just have to make things in the hotel even worse. Thanks very much. Breakfast in bed! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, have a tip.
What do you want? Excuse me, I woke up with pins and needles this morning. I'm not surprised. We put them in all the bits. Extraordinary! Acupuncture while you sleep. I can't wait to tell them about this back in Tokyo. <sighs> I just don't get it. The worse we make the hotel, the more they enjoy themselves. I know. I gave one of them a bacon sandwich earlier and he thanked me. Well, what's wrong with that? It didn't have any bacon in it. <laughs> or bread. <laughs> Where did we go right? No, there's nothing for it. We're desperate. I've called in some help. Someone who will make our guests' lives truly unbearable. Well, I can't imagine who could make things worse. Not unless you've invited. <laughs> I can't believe you actually invited that over. I'm sorry, Uncle Baz. Oh, that's all right, Bingo, me lad. Don't worry about the chaos. That's why you're here. Hmm? Oh, no, I'm not sorry about that. I'm sorry about this. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> bing, bing! <laughs> Bored now. <laughs> Basil, why? He's a menace. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here while we can. <laughs> it's been three hours. They must have all walked out by now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I get you chaps a lovely cup of tea? Nope. But if history's anything to go by, you can get us a flaming, horrible one. <laughs> Business looks good. It certainly does. But it's not for me. This is the cue for your hotel. It goes right the way around the studio. <laughs> It's incredible. People are coming from all over the world to see the worst hotel in the world. We've had to turn wardrobe and makeup into bedrooms. This is awful. Yeah. We'll never get our flak back. Yeah, but with the money we're earning, well, we could afford to buy another one. <laughs> we are a success. A what? A success? <laughs> This isn't a word he comes across very often. <laughs> we, Mr. Stephen, are the toast of the tar. <laughs> <laughs> Our worries are over, Stephen. We've all got jobs, money, and a future. We can even afford to pay the landlord. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear. <laughs> Sorry about the get-up. I'm on my way to a fancy dress party. I just thought I'd call in and collect the rent. And you can have it, my good man. No, 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 there's no good trying that this time. Because I have brought the tenancy agreement with me. And it says here quite clearly that I can have you evicted for not pay... For... Did you say I could have it? Your ears have not let you down. <laughs> Although, looking at the size of them, they've probably embarrassed him a few times. <laughs> All right. What's the catch? There isn't one. We have turned the flat into a successful hotel business. <laughs> Allow me to show you round. Ah, here's our bellboy, preparing the beds by combing a dog with fleas over the sheets. <laughs> our guests do like things to be up to scratch. <laughs> <laughs> 
And here we find our resident alternative therapist, Miss Madison. Hi. Preparing for a liposuction session. <laughs> this sucks fat, because fat sucks. <laughs> Or blues, depending on which switch you click. <laughs> Could I, like, get a new patient? Because this one just burst. <laughs> and finally, here's our receptionist, Miss Molly, tuning the TV so it shows only French programs. <laughs> <laughs> That's inhuman. Even I wouldn't do that. You can't tell me that your guests like all this? <laughs> they most certainly do. We've had to convert every room in the flat into a bedroom. Plus wardrobe, the service lift, the canteen, the production office, and the writer's room. And we're still turning people away. We run the best, worst hotel in the world. <laughs> I've finally made a success of my life. <laughs> I'd just like to thank the producers, the writers, my mother, my father, my brother, my adult, <laughs> the director, for making all this possible. I love you guys. <laughs> yes, for once, Mr. Stevens' terrible acting has hit the nail on the head. We are a hit. Your rent will never be a problem again. <laughs> now, what's the damage? 8,400 quid. <gasps> How much? A night. <laughs> it's all in the tenancy agreement, you see? You are allowed four people living here, and I can charge you £100 for every extra person now. <laughs> I've counted 84 beds, so that's 8,400 quid. Can we pay you next week? <laughs> This is brilliant. We've had to close the hotel. We're skint. And now we've only got French telly. <laughs> well, I don't care. At least things are almost back to normal. All we've got to do now is get rid of the guests. <laughs> get it off! <laughs> <laughs> you guys crack me up. Do you want to throw another shrimp on the barbie? <sighs> what are we going to do with all them? They're odd, funny-looking, and just sit around all day. <laughs> Hang on. Who am I kidding? They'll fit in fine. <laughs> well, we finally got rid of them. Hiring Enel to do that cooking was a stroke of genius. Mind you, some of the guests are in hospital. <laughs> and they were the lucky ones. I miss the guests, though. Yeah. I particularly like that Mr Albert Kirk. Mind you, I can't see how he makes money out of cosmetic surgery. I mean, what kind of idiot pays for that sort of thing? Yeah, it's a complete mystery. <laughs> CBBC Gamesters! Welcome to the Championships! It's Sheep against Sheep Action! With close encounters of the woolly kind! There's stacking! There's racing! And there's Sean teeing off! Are you lamb enough? Go to the CBBC website, click on Sean and play the Championships! Hello, welcome to the CBC office with me, you know me, the best one, 
Ian, hello. Uh, as you, what you might not know is uh, Santa Claus has moved in uh, behind us and he's grotty, but I am yet to see him with me peepers. Right. Hark, who could that be? Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Is that you, Santa Claus? Yes, it is. I am Santa. Well, Santa, actually, bit of a coincidence, I was going to write you a little letter. Would you believe it? Well, I know, asking for my presents. Well, I've got an ear, so can I read it out to you now? Of course you can. Well, what should I utilise? Your face. I will use my face to read it out. Uh, OK. Dear Santa. Yeah, it's me, man. Yep. Can I have some uh, expensive football boots? Oh, no. I'm not made of money. But, so a bit presumptive. So. Yeah. Oh, simple one here. Just a bit of football. Have a foot. No. Foot so nope. Oh. Tell you why they've sold out. Can I have shin pads? No. What can I have then if I can't have